Hi guys, bet you don't know what that is. Um, this is just a, a light-hearted look at uh, some of the things that I've encountered along the way of uh, gathering the data for this HHO test cell. So I wonder if this helps. That's the end of my propelling pencil. The black bit is 0.5 millimeters diameter. Okay, so how about that? Does, uh, does that help? So, have you uh, got it yet? There you go. That's a, a Type K thermocouple. And that little bead on the end is um, called the uh, junction. And uh, the two dissimilar wires are welded together and as you uh, change the temperature of the junction so there is uh, a voltage difference of about 41 microvolts per degree centigrade and that's displayed on the instrument underneath let's move that out of the way and as I warm up the junction so you see the temperature go up and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use this little uh, thermocouple to measure the temperature of the HHO test cell that I made. I've drilled a hole through the uh, top plate here, the plastic, and uh, separated the wires and put adhesive around there to seal the two wires. And I've positioned the thermocouple so that the, uh, the junction there is uh, towards the top of the plate there's a gap at the back so uh, it's not in the stream of bubbles and um, I know that putting it towards the top of the cell means I'll measure the the higher temperatures in the liquid but um, uh, I'll, I'll try and get everything so that it's uh, consistent and stabilizes but at least, uh, again, it'll be indicative of uh, what happens. Uh, I think it's important to, uh, to, to state that, that um, uh, the sort of test that I'm doing will be a good indicator of what happens, but I'm not saying that it's uh, you know, a finite, uh, definitive answer to everything you want to know about uh, uh, HHO cells. But I'm just trying to get an idea for what happens as I change one parameter and principally as I change the voltage what happens now I'm going to be looking at what happens when I work at a fixed voltage and change the temperature of the water. An instrument like this comes in really handy and it's surprising uh, how often uh, I use it and I'll show you another application I've got for it today here I'm making some marmalade and I've got to get the uh, sugar up to the setting point and that's 104 degrees C and uh, this little instrument is just the job for that. Uh, when I started this project I made the same mistake as I <laughs> very often make and that is that I thought this would be a, a five minute job I'll, uh, I'll just investigate water and get an understanding of it and then uh, see uh, how to go about efficiently producing gas from it and uh, so that five minute job has uh, taken <laughs> several weeks so far. What I found with one of the series of trials, if you've uh, been following, is um, did some tests at uh, 5 volts and above and then uh, um, uh, a fortnight later come back to the cell, 13 days later come back to the cell and um, did uh, a trial at 5 volts and less. And uh, what I found was I had a, a different set of readings at 5 volts on the two different occasions. And um, it was exactly the same water in the cell, hadn't changed it. I've topped it up a bit now, you may notice that, but it's from the same source, uh, my dehumidifier. Um, but there was no other change in the cells. And um, 
uh, say they, they drew a different current um, th there were several differences and it produced a different amount of gas so what I'm going to do next is investigate uh, what happens to uh, the cell for little changes in temperature uh, just so as I get a, a more complete understanding of um, what it is I'm up against I've gathered data now um, with the cell temperature going from 14.7 up to 18 so I'll average that lot out and I think what I'm going to do now uh, the cell's actually at 18.3 now I'm going to bang it up to 30 volts put some energy into the cell and warm it up and get some step changes in that uh, temperature just so as I get some uh, larger temperature differences well I've just learned uh, an expensive lesson to warm the cell up I uh, turned the volts up to uh, 30 volts and uh, at that level um, the, uh, the current drawn is uh, 1.7 amps or uh, 1.6 uh, amps but I was plugged into the 300 uh, milliamp range so that's seen off the shunt in the meter which is uh, uh, a shame because it uh, just got a bit hot and burnt out but there you go you, can't, you can never be too careful can you right I think I've uh, gathered the information that I, uh, I want Oh, well there is some good news I've just opened up the uh, meter to uh, investigate the damage and it's fused and uh, if I'd have taken the trouble to actually look at this it says fused for these ranges um, so uh, that's a treat and looking at the fuse that's an RS fuse radio spheres fuse or RS components as they are now and I must have replaced that at some stage in the past but uh, look at that that's the sign of a slow blowing of the fuse it's just gently melted in the in the middle of the wire there anyway that's that's recoverable I'm glad about that right I'm back in business I've got some uh, 500 milliamp fuses um, so you might not be aware of particularly is the resistance of that fuse will be higher and um, I'll, uh, I'll measure the resistance of a 100 milliamp fuse as well and, and just show you that I know this is a distraction for what I'm setting out to do here but let me show you this uh, this is a 500 milliamp fuse or pack of that so we'll just check the meter and okay I'm, I'm getting 0.1 of an hour, yeah, just about getting down to zero. If I, uh, I'm not going to open the packet particularly. So that's one ohm. It sometimes goes down to 0.9. So a 500 milliamp fuse um, has uh, you know a bit of resistance this is a, um, a a 3 amp fuse that'll have virtually no resistance okay point 0.3 point 0.2 yeah, so you can just about get down to Point one, point two of an ohm there, and uh, this is um, a hundred milliamp fuse. Hope I'm getting those in shot. See them. five point two ohms yeah so 
uh, low uh, milliamp fuses have got quite a lot of resistance in them um, so you know what, what means when I'm using the meter and on amps and putting that in a circuit you are introducing some resistance and this is why on the test setup over here I'm actually measuring the volts onto the cell after the meters um, so that uh, the resistance of the, um, uh, the amp meter doesn't get in the way. By the way, it can be very useful to be able to interpret uh, the way a fuse is blown. Uh, if you go to a piece of equipment and a fuse is blown like this, just a little melt in the middle, uh, then reasonably uh, what you're seeing is the wire has got hot in the middle um, it's been cooled at the ends by the caps and it is just sort of reasonably quietly melted and blown if there's no wire left in there at all if it's all vaporized and gone then reasonably you can assume there was a fairly massive uh, heavy short circuit um, so you know if if you find a piece of equipment and the fuse has gone like that there's a far better chance of it being recoverable than if if the glass is um, covered in uh, vaporized metal um, but it's just a little thing that that has helped me um, to uh, sometimes recover from a fault you're not quite sure do I replace the fuse and try it or, or not and uh, you know sometimes you can check stuff out and uh, you can't really get a clear answer but looking at that that's just a, a gentle overload but um, uh, maybe it doesn't always work like that but no it does I, if um, if you a fuse blows like that it's it's a reasonably uh, gentle failure Anyway, I hope you found that interesting, a little bit different uh, to my normal videos. And by the way, the marmalade was uh, a total success. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.